He was bringing the happy future of his native land nearer, but he himself spent half of his life in prison. He survived torture, not by groveling and repentance, but by his courage and resource. His surname, if translated from Italian, means a handbell. The great dreamer of the late Middle Ages, Tommaso Campanella, said, I am the bell foretelling the new dawn. Giovanni Domenico Campanella was born in 1568 in the family of a poor Italian shoemaker. They didn't have enough money to pay for the inquisitive boy's education, but he wanted to learn to read so much that at the age of five he listened to a teacher's explanations standing in the street at the open class window. And if the schoolboys couldn't answer the teacher's question, there was Giovanni's voice full of hope from the street asking, may I say? He was not like the other peasant boys. His relatives did not understand him, but neither did they oppress him, allowing him to choose his course of life independently. At the age of 14, the young man, keen on the stories of the Dominican monk about scientific traditions of the Dominican order, decided to go to monastery. He received a monastic name of Tommaso and excitedly plunged into learning divinity and philosophy. But soon the young man felt disappointment. Most of the treatises were reduced to endless citing of the Bible. Tommaso, with his independent character and a habit to think independently, formed since his childhood, came to a conclusion that there was an insuperable precipice between reality and the church dogmas. Campanella was only 18 when he dared to argue with teachers in a provincial monastic school. In response to accusations of being self-assured, he quoted the research of Bernardino Telesio, a philosopher and natural scientist, on the nature of things. The young man shared the scientist's conclusion that science should study the nature, not the Bible. After leaving the monastery, Campanella went to Naples. After the publication of his first book, the 24-year-old scientist was arrested by the Inquisition and was kept in a dark, wet cellar for the whole year. After release, Campanella set out traveling across Italy. He not only admired the beauty of Rome, Florence, and Padua, Tommaso studied science with great interest and wrote new books. For this, he again was accused of heresy. Chained in shackles, Tommaso was sent to Rome and confined in a castle. Campanella, who had an inexhaustible knowledge and eloquence, managed to lead the investigation up a blind alley. Three years had passed before the tribunal of the Inquisition declared its verdict. Tommaso was obliged to kneel and say standard for that period wording of the renunciation of heresy. After release, Campanella wandered across Italy, which was under the rule of the Spanish crown. The humanists decided to stir up a rebellion against the Spanish rule and to proclaim his native Calabria a republic, but he was arrested again because of denunciation. In 1599, Campanella, together with his father and brother who supported him, was put into the prison. He suffered the most refined torture, but didn't plead guilty. To avoid quartering, Tommaso decided to feign that he was mad. He pretended so skillfully that he was able to deceive the authoritative council of physicians, and the sentencing was postponed until the rebel comes back to his mind. Though exhausted by torture, Campanella did not stop working. His father and brother, who were with him in the cell, could not understand why Tommaso, who was already weak and exhausted, inflicted further torture on himself by working on the manuscript. But Campanella aspired to finish the book, which he hoped would educate mankind and thus change the world. Campanella's main work, The City of the Sun, was written in the form of a dialogue between a hotel owner and a seaman who had visited the wonderful city. In this book, Campanella embodied his vision of the ideal social structure built on principles of equality, justice, and wisdom of governors. The author saw the pledge of happiness of the Sun City inhabitants, Solarians, in love for the nature and studies. And the Sun was praised as the apotheosis of the nature, the source of heat, light, and mind. Campanella spent 30 long years in prison. It was by a fluke that he got released. 
When predictions of astrologers about Pope Urban VIII's death started to spread in Europe, the resourceful Campanella, who used to study astrology, declared that he knew how to save the Pope. The prisoner was delivered to Rome, and he managed to engender the hope for avoiding the terrible prophecy in the Pope. Urban VIII returned freedom to the 60-year-old scientist. Moreover, he gave him back the confiscated manuscripts. Tommaso regained the right to become a scientist, but didn't stop being a revolutionary. He didn't abandon his cherished dream to achieve independence for his native Calabria. But after the plot failure, Campanella had to escape from Italy. In France, the well-known philosopher and the prisoner of the Inquisition was greeted with honors. During the last four years of his life, Campanella, by order of Cardinal Richelieu, conducted scientific assemblies in the French Academy. Campanella died in 1639. The City of the Sun, made up by him, is not simply another utopia. Tommaso Campanella's ideas call on people not only to dream of a new fair society, but also to bring it nearer.